Baltaki has contributed to numerous fields in econometrics, including panel data models, simultaneous equation models, spatial econometrics, prediction and specification tests, and just to mention a few. He is author of several books, including Econometric Analysis and Panel Data, published at Wiley, and is also the editor of numerous books and journal special issues. Professor Baltaki is author, co-author of more than 160 publications in leading economics and statistics journals. He is the editor of Economics Letters, editor of Empirical Economics, and associate editor of Journal Econometrics and Econometric Reviews. He is the replication editor of the Journal of Applied Econometrics and the series editor for contributions to economic analysis. Badi Baltaki is a fellow of the Journal of Econometrics and a recipient of the Multa and Pura Scripsit Awards from Econometric Theory. He is also a fellow of the Advantage in Econometrics and the recipient of the Distinguished Authors Award from the Journal of Applied Econometrics. He is director and founding member of the International Association for Applied Econometrics. Professor Bartaghi is one of the leading scientists in our profession and a truly distinguished speaker. And we're looking very much forward to your talk today, uh, Bardi, on panel data forecasting. And let me just remind you, this, this uh, lecture is being video recorded, so we decided to take questions after Bardi has, giving, uh, has given his uh, lecture. Please go ahead, Bardi. Thank you very much, Niels, for this wonderful in introduction. I just hope that uh, I live up uh, to it. Uh, I've enjoyed so much wonderful hospitality here at Aros. This is my first time in Aros, not the first time in Denmark. Uh, this is, of course, at the uh, kind invitation of Timo, Tiras Virta, a good friend. It's nice to see him. Again, we shared wonderful times in uh, San Diego uh, with uh, our mutual friend, Clive Granger, beautiful walks good econometrics, uh, lunches with Hal White and uh, Alan Timmerman and Graham Elliott and, and others. Uh, so I'm very, very happy to be here. Um, this is uh, obviously a, uh, when, when he told me I have to give a uh, distinguished series, I'm, I'm used to being videotaped at the IMF, so I have to be careful to uh, uh, not to uh, uh, say any bad words or, or, or take the mic with me to the, to, to the bathroom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I may make those mistakes a anyway. As uh, I decided, since it's a, a general lecture, especially after the course with these wonderful students that I taught for the last two days, is to continue in, a, in that spirit of, of basically educating, giving you a survey of uh, what's happening in, in forecasting a panel. I don't promise that it is uh, up to date because this, this, uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but it is a chapter which is just out in the Handbook of Economic Forecasting, Volume 2B, by Graham Elliott and Alan Timmerman. If I understand, Alan is also a fellow of this uh, uh, center. It's uh, uh, the second volume. The first volume was with Clive. So um, I'm a panel data guy, so I'm going to restrict my uh, lecture to that. Uh, what I'm trying to, what I'm going to give you is uh, a, a review of some of the forecasting applications in panel data. I'm going to talk about very, very simple models. I've been hammered by a lot of scientists to keep it simple. That's what I told my students for the last uh, two days, kiss. Okay, Arnold Zellner used to always kiss, you know, keep it simple. And I won't tell you the last S for uh, what it stands for, but, uh, and Manny Parson and many others. So I'm, I'm sure you're aware of that simplicity thing. And that's really a guideline here, very simple models uh, that we probably say it's too simple, but uh, we have to, uh, the baby has to walk before they run. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about uh, forecasting with uh, error components, basically, th that take care of heterogeneity in panels. Uh, uh, if, if, if you've, uh, this is the simplest model, the simplest workhorse for panel. I'll, I'll talk more about it, but the students that took the course already know, or, or if you work in panels, you already know that that's a simple workhorse. And then, then we're going to add some uh, serial correlation structure on it of the ARMA type. Uh, I, I, I'm also going to uh, add to it some spatial dependence for the cross section type dependence, because uh, uh, ARMA type goes on a time series, and there's two components here. 
I'm going to add equations of Ala Zellner, equations with no endogeneity on the right hand side. Those are simulated regressions. And um, I'm, I, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, some, uh, like I said, forecasting application, Monte Carlo studies, and uh, future work. There's a lot of work to be done here. Uh, if, uh, I know this is a center for time series, and you, you, uh, a lot of the stuff uh, in time series is being moved over to panels, uh, especially with uh, non-stationarity unit roots and co-integration and all that stuff. So it, it, it is worthwhile seeing whether uh, some of the stuff also uh, 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 in forecasting can, uh, can be done. Um, <clears throat> so the basic... Uh, um, uh, advantages of panels have been already elicited, and uh, uh, I'm not going to talk about those. You can read uh, uh, Cheng Chao's uh, uh, master's uh, 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 masterful book on, on the, from the Econometric Society, uh, and or, or else my latest edition uh, of Wiley. Uh, um, as I tell my students, shameless advertising. I make sure I advertise uh, uh, all the time. Okay, uh, what I'm going to talk here about is the advantages of panel data forecasting rather than the advantage panel data. Uh, a lot of examples, what have, have, has it been done in economics, the applied guys always say, it has, okay. Uh, fortunately, been part of those applications myself. So we, we've looked at liquor sales across US states uh, a, a, with uh, a Griffin. Uh, there's uh, studies on world carbon dioxide emissions using uh, national level panel data in our Stat Vintage uh, 95 by Hotsegan and Selden and Schmalen, C. Stoker and Judson, our Stat again 98. Uh, and I'm sure there's more now. Uh, gasoline demand uh, with Griffin, an energy economist, and then residential electricity and natural gas demand by Madala and uh, his co-authors and by myself and my French co-authors. Uh, there's also individual earnings by Chamberlain and Hirano. And uh, there's um, uh, uh, other examples by uh, uh, Keenan Runkel and Das uh, et al. Uh, on listing respondents' intentions or predictions for future outcomes using household survey panel data. There's also macro type growth rates of OECD countries, Hochstrat, Palm, and Fan. Uh, and then there's uh, also cigarette sales in Aristat back in 2002. I can go on, I actually will talk on some, some of these applications, but you get the idea. There's also the impact of uh, UK investment uh, authorizations using a panel of UK industries, Driver et al, Urga, 2004. And then uh, lottery ticket sales in Wisconsin uh, using zip code data, Fries and Miller, and uh, um, uh, exchange rate determination using industrialized countries, quarterly panel data, RAPAC and Wohar, uh, JME. And then uh, migration to, Germ uh, to Germany from 18 source countries over the period 67 to 2001, Rooker and Silverstaffs. And inflation uncertainty using a panel of density forecast from the survey of professional forecasters, Lahiri and Liu and uh, annual growth rates of real gross uh, regional uh, products of, for a panel of Chinese regions uh, by Girardin and Holodin. Okay. What I'm going to do is start with the basic models, the basic model like, like doing in Econometrics 1. So rather than talk about blue, best linear and biased estimators, uh, I'm going to talk about BLOP. BLOP is best linear and biased predictors. Okay. Best linear and biased predictors, I I think the naming goes back to Goldberger. Art Goldberger, a great teacher in econometrics at Wisconsin, with students like uh, Bill Green and, and, and many others. So uh, he had a, uh, <clears throat> the statisticians uh, that worked on this stuff uh, uh, are basically biometricians. Henderson, Harville, uh, 75, 76. Uh, it's mostly there, they're interested in animal breeding, uh, but really, uh, uh, panel data people have taken this literature into economics. They, uh, this is where you'll find it. You'll find it, uh, as I tell my students, in linear models, books in statistics, and the linear models don't have X beta in them. They only have these uh, 
uh, uh, new eyes and, 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 uh, and land of these and new ITs, uh, uh, fertilizers and, and father bull and daughter cow uh, milk production and stuff like that. Okay, for them, the, 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 the X's are the, the, uh, the betas on the X's are the nuisance parameters. They're interested in the, in, in the, uh, in, in the uh, uh, variance components. For economists, we're, those are the nuisance parameters we're interested in the betas. So it's a, it's, we're in the same ball game, but we're talking different languages. Okay? Um, <clears throat> They've used it to estimate genetic uh, merits in animal breeding, as I said, and they could uh, predict uh, the milk uh, production of daughter cows based on their lineage. And believe me, I've been in Texas, so this, these uh, numbers matter. They hang them on the bull, and that's where you buy whether you want to uh, sire this, this, this bull for your cows to get more milk. So it, it, they really use it for, and they put their money where their, where their mouth is. But it's also been used, and there's a nice uh, write-up by Robinson, and not Peter, it's a, it's a different Robinson. Uh, uh, a good review of this, if, you'll, if you're interested in it, it's cited in the, in the chapter, and I assume it'll, it'll be available to you. Uh, to derive Kalman filters, to, uh, uh, it's been used for all reserve estimation in Krigging. Uh, it's been used to uh, work out insurance premiums using credibility theory, remove noise from images, and for small area estimation. That's where you'll see a lot of the articles in JAZA and small area estimation. Harville, a, a great statistician, has, has done, done a lot of contributions to this literature, and he shows that the Bayesian posterior mean predictors with the diffuse uh, priors are equivalent to BLOP. Uh, in actuarial science, the problem of predicting future claims of risk class, given past claims of that risk class, is freeze at all. And uh, Bar uh, Batiste, uh, Harder and Fuller, the same Wayne Fuller, that does the Dickey Fuller and the uh, um, uh, errors in measurement has uh, written a paper on predicting county crop areas with survey and satellite data using error component models. So although this blob has been widely studied in statistics and biometrics, little discussion on the subject appears in econometrics literature. I tried to remedy this by writing the first forecast. It came from an invitation from the Bundesbank in a forecasting conference, and I believe that I, I was the, probably one of the few panel data papers. Um, <clears throat> so, what, what, I'll show you what's been done, uh, and, and uh, like I said, it will be uh, deriving simple blobs for a simple regression model that you can teach in your econometrics one course, uh, using AR1, MA1, and, and, and ARMA models, and SAR models, and SMA models. If you don't know what the spatial uh, autoregressive model or the spatial moving average model, I'll talk about it. Even, uh, but I clicked on some of the videos, and I saw that uh, Bill Green uh, talked about some spatial models. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll also, like I said, ex uh, talk about some of the extensions and then try to tie it up to, uh, to the literature on forecast combinations, forecasting pooling methods. And that's where I think is really uh, needs a lot of work. If I have some really good students, that's where I will send them uh, to work on. So um, the panel promises you that, that th it, it's, it's really uh, takes care of heterogeneity. Okay, we are all heterogeneous, and in a cross section, you can't take care of heterogeneity. With a panel, you can. Uh, very tough to take care of heterogeneity. They had to work with twins to make sure that we're, we're, we're keeping things constant. The mother's uh, milk, the father's upbringing, uh, the, the genetics, okay? And so, Ashen Felter and company looked at, 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 at people, uh, at twins, and following twins, that's pretty hard. Okay, with panel data, all you have to do is, fall, is a repeated observation on the same person, and as long as you have a, 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 a time invariant characteristic like, you know, uh, uh, race, gender, uh, 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 um, uh, ability, okay, in a short time period, you're not learning, we are learning, so it, that may be also changing, you can say that differencing across two periods will wipe out that, uh, that, uh, that characteristic that you have. Okay, uh, and so with control for any time invariant variables. Unfortunately, there is no free lunch. The, you pay the price. The price is you actually 
uh, cannot get the, 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 uh, the, the uh, effect of a time invariant variable that you are interested in for policy purposes. And that's normally what, what is uh, the, the, the problem with, this, with these methods. Political scientists don't like it because they don't give uh, answers to these problems. Labor economists don't like it because uh, they don't, if, 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 if you're estimating a minster wage equation and you want to know that, uh, the, 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 why females make less than males, you know, uh, uh, that's the dummy on a, on a, on a gender, uh, uh, the, est the estimate of the coefficient on that, and that's wiped out by differencing. Uh, the same with race uh, discrimination, and uh, the same with, uh, so you're trying to control for ability, but you lose the, 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 uh, the, the discrimination case. You can't get estimates of that, okay? And uh, uh, the same with gravity equations in trade. You want to know whether a common language enhances trade, but common language is common language. It's not going to change, okay? And so it, it's wiped out. Democracy indices, all these indices now they're putting in growth equations and, and development and, and, and uh, seeing whether, whether, whether uh, if you're more democratic. Well, you know, if you have countries with 40 years of undemocratic rule, it's, it's not changing very much in time. Even though it's not completely wiped out, its identification is hanging by its nails. Okay? So we've got to be careful. So that's, that's, I think, one of the main uh, contributions that panels have done. They, you cannot control for heterogeneity in cross-sections properly, I will claim. Okay? You're always lucky if you have another repeated cross-sections or a panel because that's where you really can control for that heterogeneity. And it's really, uh, can be thought of as omission bias that would, that would bias your cross-section results. So how does that help? Well, in forecasting, it should help, and it does help. I'll show you in Monte Carlo's and in empirical applications how much the gains are. Normally, you show how bad the cross-section results are with estimation with panels. Here, I'm gonna show you with forecasting, it really matters, even if it's uh, you know, post-forecasting with uh, uh, but uh, I, I don't want to say that that's the only model out there. There are skeptics. So uh, Pesaran and, and, and his co-authors uh, have uh, uh, generated a huge literature on heterogeneous panel models. So if the time series gets large, so these are not micro anymore. Micro is normally, uh, as I said in my lectures, a tall and thin panel, okay? very large N for individuals, very short T, because uh, it's very expensive to, to, to survey the same people over and over again. And, and it never happens in, in poor countries, it only happens in rich countries, okay? Whereas uh, in macro panels, especially after the pen world tables, we now have a, a huge literature on, on countries over time Right? And so the T can be large. Or if you are in, a, in the stock market, you have an abundance of, 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 of stock prices over literally daily, uh, daily uh, units. So your N, N, T can be large. Same with marketing. When you uh, swipe your card, you, can, you, you, they know, uh, you know all the purchases and repeated purchases over time. And many consumers, many time periods. Okay, so uh, the asymptotics are, are uh, you have to be careful, okay? It was clear before in micro panels, the N large, T small, T fixed, so N, N 10 to infinity is obvious. But when we went to macro panels, and that was 90s, 2000, then we got both indices growing, and some applications aren't either. They're not even kosher, you know. Uh, 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 and I'm guilty of that. You've got 20, 30 countries, and uh, you know, 40, 50 years, so the T could be even bigger, okay? But most likely, you'll, you'll, uh, they could be of equal size, and 50 countries, 50 periods, which one is going to infinity? Or is it enough for asymptotics? Okay, the asymptotics for that was 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 uh, developed by uh, Peter Phillips and Roger Moon in an Econometrica in '99, telling us that joint asymptotics is not as easy as you think. Uh, is it going along the array from the origin? Is it sequential? It matters to the results of the estimators. Okay, I'm not going to go into that. That's another area that could uh, come in into the. Uh, uh, the properties of your forecasts that, uh, that haven't been done. Okay, uh, so um, I will get back to the heterogeneous versus homogeneous later on because it, it'll matter in, in our, uh, 
But at the end, if I don't have time, because I have too many slides, too many for, for the time allocated, you, you know, uh, uh, let me say what, uh, what's, what's coming at the end. It's, the combination forecast literature weighs in, I think, here, because if you're going to, uh, you either can pull the data and forecast, or you can keep the data separate, especially if you believe every country is different, they, they shouldn't have the same equation, and I have a very long time series, so I'm gonna do my time series stuff on every country, okay? So, but this is a panel, so you know, you should, you should take it into account. You can take it into account by saying these are Scandinavian countries, they're correlated, uh, they, they, they affect each other, there's common factors, all that stuff that will help, right, in the estimation and in the forecasting, right? Or uh, uh, you can forecast them separately and then combine the, the, the forecast, simple, uh, with simple combination weights, like average forecast, discounted mean forecast errors, shrinkage forecasts, principal component forecast combinations, time varying parameter forecasts, or Bayesian model averaging, a la Stock and Watson or Timmerman. All right, so I, I said I will talk about homogeneous versus heterogeneous later on. I am not going to be uh, uh, doing justice to the Bayesian literature, which uh, always claims uh, to, to do better, okay? And uh, 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 there's, there's a huge literature on that, uh, Zellner and his uh, co-authors, and Coop uh, uh, and Potter, and Fabio Canova and uh, Cingarelli, okay? Uh, so that's uh, where uh, the uh, survey is deficient. Uh, uh, and you could find some more literature on that. So let's get started. The, the simplest model that I can put for you is our simple regression model. Uh, linear IT, I is cross-section T is time periods. You can think of them as firms, countries, households. Here's the, uh, the, simpl the simplest uh, error component model to control for heterogeneity. The heterogeneity goes into the mu I. The mu I is unobservable. Uh, so instead of the, uh, uh, the error being basically a, a, a idiosyncratic shock, nu IT, we add the mu I to it, okay, in economics. That takes care of any time invariant factor that is uh, 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 in a model that we can't control for, okay? So that, that's the error components. The statisticians call that one-way ANOVA, okay, one-way analysis of variance. I told you they don't have X betas, okay, uh, you saw the, the the, 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 the the examples where you know the, the, the bull or you know uh, a, a crop yield crop yield mu i would be a fertilizer if you if you if you came to Texas A and M when I was in Texas you'll see plots of land they divide the, 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 the land they'll have flags on each plot they're controlling for the same temperature the same uh, soil quality all those variables are being in an experiment sense. And now they put different fertilizers and they see how much is the yield, okay? So that's why the, the X's aren't there. The X's are being controlled for in a semi-experiment. That's what some labor economists are trying to do today with natural experiments and, and human beings. Good luck. That's a tougher, tougher uh, example. So uh, that's how we're gonna control endogeneity. Obviously, the basic panels, if mu i is fixed, a parameter to be estimated, uh, uh, then, then it's a fixed effect. And if it is a random uh, a component uh, with mean zero and variance sigma squared mu, so all you require with that magical quick stroke, one parameter rather than n parameters, you've got uh, the random effects model. Of course, uh, I talked all about fixed versus random and, and the Hausman test and all that stuff, I can't do that here. But the, the idea uh, is that the mu i fixed effects, the modern interpretation of this mu i is random anyway. I don't care, uh, Jeff Woolridge will tell you, uh, and, and goes back to Mundlek and say the mu i's are correlated with the x's. In economics, we're obsessed with endogeneity. Mu i ability is correlated with schooling. If you want the returns to schooling, sorry, Okay, you, 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 you're gonna have to control for that endogeneity. I'm not going to go out the experiments or twins or, or stuff, it's very hard with panel. What am I going to do? Okay, essentially I'm gonna condition on the mu i's, I'm gonna wipe them out. That's what the first difference will do, but that loses a first observation. In time series, that's not a big deal, but in, 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 in micro panels, that's a big deal. 
okay? Because every T is precious, every T is precious. You paid a lot of money for it and you're using N observations, not one, okay? So, so uh, 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 I follow David Henry, as I said, in, in the IMF and he walks in and puts a lot of lags on the Ys and, and, and tell, you know, until there is no serial correlation. Well, I, I tell him you can't do that in panels with a very short T, because every lag you're getting rid of an N, okay? And five lags is five N, and then you got a difference, that's six N. Well, you're back to a cross section, okay? So, so uh, you gotta be careful uh, with, with your lagging in, in a very short T situation. I'm not gonna do the matrix algebra, but I'm gonna show you what, uh, what to expect, especially if you read this literature. And this literature comes from biometrics. Like I said, I've, I've used their notation. Economists never like it. But, uh, so, so here's alpha is the intercept, uh, beta is the slopes, uh, and uh, 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 x means there's no intercept, z means there's an intercept in the, in the regressors. That's all it means. And then the error term, remember the mu i is of dimension n, and n is large, okay? So, n, uh, 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 and individual effects, uh, and, and when they are n parameters, and, and the asymptotics is on n, like in micro, remember every new observation, if you're talking about asymptotics, will bring me a new mu i. So every new individual g gets his own mu i. He's special, he's different, he's heterogeneous. Timo's not me, I'm not. Uh, uh, like Timo, even though we like each other, we're, we're different. Okay, so the mu i is different, and so if it's different, okay, it's an extra parameter. And so that's the incidental parameter problem in statistics. Neyman and Scott, Econometrica 40s, okay? Uh, and so, uh, uh, so, so there, it's an example of an MLE under normality where it's not consistent for mu i. But fortunately for us, the inconsistency of the mu i doesn't transmit into the betas. And what we are interested in, the betas. Then that's why we're, we're, we're able to estimate uh, by conditioning on those. So the fixed effects will assume they are parameters. And if they assume they are parameters, this is a matrix of dummies. What is a matrix of dummies? Well, it depends on how you sort the data. If you sort the data such that the uh, uh, the, 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 the slow index is i and the fast index is t, the turtle and the rabbit, as I, told, I called it in my course, okay, the rabbit is t, the turtle is i, okay, then when you put the dummies for the mu1 up to mu n, you have to add mu1 here, you have to add mu2 here, you have to add mu n here, the dummies have to look like this. This is a vector of ones, always, and the dimension is right there. Uh, so this is a vector of ones, and it's put next to an identity matrix of dimension n. That's how the computer will print out your dummies if you sorted the data like that. Of course, nobody enters those dummies. You create them now beautifully with any matrix language. The random effect says that's too much, the statistician says it's too much loss of degrees of freedom, n parameters to estimate. So we're gonna estimate only one parameter, sigma squared mu, but the, they're drawn randomly. By the luck of the draw, God gave you this mu one, it came from this distribution with mean zero and variance sigma squared u. Okay, easy trick with one variance for the heterogeneity, okay, the idiosyncratic variance. Your omega is going to be fancy. It's gonna be block matrices. I don't have time to go through that. But you, up to a scalar, you only need to estimate one parameter, just like an AR1 model or an MA1 model. That's why I say this is a, a, a simple model, a, a, a quick uh, model. So the omega under an error component model will be this, and there are tricks to, to, to show you that actually this can be rewritten as a, this is a spectral decomposition of omega. This is the averaging matrix. This is the within matrix. This in, 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 if you pre-multiply the model by this matrix, you'll get the, the, uh, the average over the whole time period. So it's back to a cross section, and that's called the between regression. This is uh, I minus P, so this is Y minus uh, Y bar, but Y bar only over T for each country, and so that's the within regression. So this is the within regression, this is the between regression. If you forget about these sigmas, if you add them up, you'll get OLS, equally weighted within and between uh, variation, okay? But if you weight them by their variances, you'll get the random effects. The random effects is a fancy generalized least squares, 
okay, that takes care of heterogeneity through the variants. The, the, the reason why it's not as uh, so popular is because it assumes it's uncorrelated with the axis. And I told you in economics, we're obsessed with endogeneity, okay? All right, so you got to pass the Hausman test to get into the endogeneity. Okay, so uh, obviously, even in with fixed effects, you're not going to be able to run a, a, a regression with the dummies unless it's only 50 states or 30 countries or whatnot. If it's 5,000 individuals, you, you, you can't put 4,999 dummies. You say, I can, I have a powerful computer, but you shouldn't. That matrix may give you a generalized inverse that's not good. So that, and remember, this was developed in the 60s in, ec in econometrics. And so these, uh, these people created the within, the, uh, uh, within matrix, the projection P, the I minus P stuff. So what you do is you, you use the Frischois level theorem to to, to, to uh, remove the dummies, oops, to remove these dummies, okay? This is uh, some kind of review from, for, for, for some of you I know, but I need to set it up for the predictor. These are the dummies, okay? So if you, you put the dummies back in here, and so what, it, what fixed effects is saying, you omitted dummies. Those dummies actually span everything that you omitted that's time invariant. And you're not gonna get those, but that's going to be more robust than OLS, pooled OLS on this model. And so when you put the dummies in there, okay, you, you, need, you, you need to get the betas. Okay, you're interested in the betas, you're not interested in the mu's, but you need to put those in there and you can't put them in there. So how do you do? You project on them. That's what the Frischois level theorem says. You project on these dummies and it turns out these dummies are ones and zeros and it's so easy to, to show that the projection matrix is uh, uh, your, uh, your uh, x, x prime, x inverse is a between, is an averaging matrix. This is J is a matrix of ones uh, of dimension T by T. The bar means you divide by T, so it's an averaging matrix. You multiply that by a time series, you'll get the, its sum and divide by T will be the average and you repeat that for every country. So that's the Y I bar. In, 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 in econometrics, uh, and the, the, the Q matrix is Y minus YI bar. That's where you remove, this is where you remove the, the mu I, because you subtracted the average, this is where the mu I lies in, in, in a projection on this, the between regression. Okay, so at the end of the day, you could have run, so far I've you've developed, the, you could run pooled OLS ignoring all the heterogeneity, uh, whether fixed or random, or you could run the fixed effects estimator, which puts the, uh, the dummies uh, there if you can, but if you can't, you do a within regression, or you do a random effects, and that's the, uh, the, uh, this, this, this uh, Aitken estimator, the best linear unbiased estimator that I need, okay? But, but this is knowing omega, so you need to estimate that, and obviously you cannot invert an NT by NT matrix when it's 5,000 individuals, 10 years, 50,000 by 50,000 by giving it to the computer, so you need the inverse of that. And the inverse of that comes beautifully from the spectral decomposition. Since this is the characteristic roots, turns out to be the characteristic roots, and P and Q are the matrices of characteristic vectors, and they're idempotent and sum to the identity, the, the answer is simple. It was given by Fuller and Batiste in JAZA and uh, in 74, and, and uh, the, their answer was, you pre-multiply by omega minus half and do OLS. The omega minus half turns out to be so simple. This is the within, this is the between. At the end of the day, it's a simple transformation that you can do with Excel. Yit minus theta yi bar. That's why random effects was so popular. You just run a, an OLS regression just like uh, you would run the within now by uh, yit minus yi bar. The within is just q, the between is yi bar. Really, this is where you see it's a weighted combination of both. Now, why do I estimate the theta? The statisticians tell us that the best quadratic unbiased, this is the best you could do on these variances, is by taking quadratic forms, because they are quadratic, variances are quadratic, in the U's, in the true disturbances, okay, with P is the averaging matrix, so a simple calculator formula, or a within average, a, a deviation from means average. Okay, the only problem is, even though this is an estimate, best quadratic, it's based on, on the true uh, disturbances. We don't have the true disturbances. Okay, but remember the statisticians did not have X beta, so they actually had the yield 
they had the milk, they had the output, they didn't need any of that stuff. So if you read Grable or you read Shear, Shale Seal at Cornell and Biometrics, that's what you'll see. The economists came in and said, okay, we will plug in OLS residuals, or we'll plug in fixed effects residuals. Wallace Hussein, uh, 69 Econometrica Amemia uh, uh, International Economic Review. Now I want to go to the prediction. Okay, I'm sorry I gave this quick background, but it's important because Goldberger, Art Goldberger in Jazz and 62 said, in this model with a fancy omega, whatever it is, the best linear unbiased predictor, the BLUP, okay, the best linear unbiased predictor, BLUP, is uh, you, you, you don't only extend the line with your, your GLS estimator, but you have, to, you know something about the error. And that error, okay, can feed into your forecast. So what am I doing here? I'm forecasting for the ice country S periods ahead, okay, or the ice individual or firm S periods ahead, okay? So obviously I need the regressors, that's another issue, okay? I can plug them in, this is what all your packages are doing. So when you see forecasts and these, all these applied guys come in and forecast, forecast, this is exactly what they're doing, they're just extending this line here, okay? Most of the time they don't, they're not doing this. Okay, they're not, they're not extending it with the, uh, since I know it's an AR1 and since I know it's an MA1, if I believe that and I'm using that, then I might as well use that in my forecast, okay? So the omega could be an AR1 in a time series. Uh, GLS residuals is a vector of the data uh, residuals, okay, from GLS. W basically is the covariance of where I'm predicting in my data sample, okay? So, uh, uh, R3 derived the Gauss-Markov theorem, showed that this is the formula in general depending on true omega, and that is best. Among all linear unbiased predictors, uh, this is the best one. Well, now I need, I need uh, he applied it to the AR1 in that JASA piece, if you've read it, and what he showed is for the AR1, UT uh, equals rho UT minus one plus epsilon T, which you're very familiar with, uh, baby, baby uh, AR1 model, all you have to do is, the, if you're predicting one period ahead, t plus one, that term, the whole term will be rho times the last ut, okay? So you're predicting ut plus one by rho ut, basically. If you had you, the last residual, you multiply it by rho and add it, that's better than not adding it. The problem with that is you have to estimate rho, hmm? and you have to estimate ut. And Bailey and Spitzer showed that once you estimate it, it's not clear that you do better than OLS in some of these models, okay? All right, that's a, another JAZA article uh, uh, much later. But hold on for now, let's see what is it for the error component model. For the error component model, you have the country effect. You, can't, uh, you cannot uh, uh, omit, or the individual effect. Why, if it's, if it's Denmark, you have to have the Denmark effect. If Germany, the Germany effect, okay? But the covariance turns out to be uh, very simple because the only correlation across time, so far I'm not allowing correlation in the idiosyncratic terms, the, uh, the AR1 or the MA1 or the ARMA. I'm only, uh, the only correlation across time in a simple panel is, is because it's a Denmark observation or a Germany observation. So, so the correlation, the statistician called equi-correlated, equi-correlated because even if it's, even if it's five periods later or two periods later, it's the Germany effect and the covariance is the same, okay? So, okay, I tell my students, the patient is not dead if you plot the corollogram, it's, it's, it's beeping like this, but, but, but it's equal, it's always equal. It doesn't die out like an AR1 or one blip, blip like an MA1. It's, it's always there, equi-correlated matrix. So that's what we'll do. We will actually correct with this omega uh, and this variance covariance matrix that I spent time to show you, uh, uh, even though it should be uh, obvious to panel data people, okay? And so with this omega and this row, uh, remember I need omega and I need this uh, uh, little omega, okay, or W. And this uh, little W turns out to be uh, the, the, the effect of, uh, of that country, okay? The effect of that country. So this whole term that I need to add to my predictor from a random effects regression turns out to be this term. What is this term? This term is the 
is the uh, uh, residuals for that country averaged over time. That's where its effect lies. That's why it's going to give me more information for that country effect, weighted by the variance components. This was derived by Taub in Journal of Econometrics in 79, but it was also derived by Wanspeck and Captain literally in a, 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 in a related matter and by uh, Griffith uh, and Lee, uh, Long Fei Lee, in, in a non-published paper a uh, long time ago. Uh, and they gave it a Bayesian interpretation, actually. So in any way, uh, this is the published one. So this is the, the predictor. Just like uh, a, uh, 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 and, and there's uh, the, the citations. But this assumes the true values of the variance components. So if I plug in estimates of them, what's going to ha happen, okay? Well, the statisticians had already Taking care of that, Kakar and Harville propose inflation factors that account for additional uncertainty introduced by estimating these variance components. Well, when I was giving an early paper on prediction with, with AR1 uh, and uh, models and simple one-way error component models in Michigan State, Rich, uh, Richard Bailey told me, uh, no, no, I've got this paper with Spitzer that shows uh, even for the AR1 model, when you estimate rho and you estimate the residual, uh, you already uh, uh, left the blop long time ago, and the OLS uh, may even do better. Well, we wrote a paper together. This paper is in, uh, in a volume in honor of uh, G.S. Madala. It's, it's uh, 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 called a Qualitative Limited Dependent Variables and Panel Data, Cambridge University Press 99, edited by Chao Pesaran and two of Madala's students, Lang Feili and Kajal Lahiri. And uh, what it says is this is, will not happen in panels. In fact, we, we proved that with uh, deriving asymptotic mean squared prediction errors and doing Monte Carlos. So even though you plug in these estimates in our model, uh, you still get uh, the, the, uh, a better predictor. What did we compare in that paper? We compared basically the MLE predicting uh, 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 this uh, T plus S, uh, assuming normality. A truncated MLE where you don't add what uh, Goldberger said to add. The misspecified predictor, these are the packages OLS predictors, okay? And the fixed effects uh, predictor, which basically adds the dummy for that country if you've estimated it, and uh, the dummy variable estimators if you can do that. Of course, you can do this with a within regression. The within regression will give you the beta. It doesn't give you the alpha or the mu, but the alpha and the mu can be retrieved uh, from, the, uh, from the, uh, the average equation. This is the intercept always int retrieved. The data passes through the mean, and this mu i from the averaging equation can be retrieved, okay? So this is how actually the, pa the, the packages retrieve uh, those uh, alphas. When there shouldn't be an alpha in stata, there is an alpha, that's that alpha, okay? Uh, there shouldn't be one. It's a dummy variable trap, right? Uh, so in any way, we did asymptotic uh, formulas for the mean squared error predictor for all four predictors, and we found with numerical and simulation results that are shown to perform adequately for realized samples of the size of 50 countries or 500 individuals over 10 and 20 periods. Of course, this all depends on the, uh, there's, uh, there's gains, of course, uh, in, in this. And the ranking was clear. The, 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 the predictor using the MLE is, is, is the best. Uh, the misspecified is the worst. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and truncating it, and actually uh, the fixed effects is uh, second best, okay? So taking care of the heterogeneity and doing the blob thing is important, uh, and do it right, and uh, it depends on the magnitude of that heterogeneity. If it's 0.9 versus 0.6, the gains are uh, either tenfold or twofold, okay? Um, what about if I start going to a two-way anal analysis of variance, as, as the statisticians would call it, or really when we go into macro panels or more time series panels, okay, a, a long time series, well, then you, you really have to have a time period effect. These are the common factors. These are the common factors. This is everything that happened in those years that affect all the firms. Some regulation, some uh, uh, recession in the economy, uh, high unemployment, uh, 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 and whatnot. This is going to span every 
every uh, 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 firm invariant variable that it's only varying with time. Is that clear? That's the negative part. That's the positive and negative. Positive because if I didn't include one, it takes care of it. The omission bias problem. Negative because if I want one of those and want their effects to report, then I, uh, that estimator doesn't give it to me in a fixed effect because it wipes it out. Okay? All right? And so that's the two-way model. Of course, if they're both parameters, you put dummies for both. That's easy for labor economists. That's why in Stata there is no two-way model. And it is, for Stata, there's only a one-way model because the n is large, the t is small, so you just put dummies for, the, for, the, for each year by hand. And that's it. Stata didn't program it. In eViews, there is both, okay? Two-way model, two, two clicks. Uh, it has cross-section, period, you click, Random, random, fixed, fixed, random, fixed, fixed, random. It's easy. I don't leave home without it in an undergraduate course. Okay, this, this is, they love click, click, as I tell my students. So in a random model, all of these are random. Where would that be particularly good? Stock markets, right? I got the stock effect. I got the, I got the, the uh, daily effect, right? And they're, and they're shocks. If I knew what they were, if I knew more information, I'd make a lot of money. If they're random, this should be better than doing nothing, okay? All right, in that panel. So fancier variance covariance matrix, now I have three variances. I've got heterogeneity across, the, uh, uh, across uh, time be due to the same country. I got heterogeneity, heterogeneity across different uh, 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 countries for the same uh, time period. Okay, so how am I gonna do the blop? Well, uh, uh, I, I've got a fancier omega. The variance covariance matrix, surprisingly, if I'm predicting for the ith country, even uh, uh, five, three, two periods ahead, it's still the same covariance term because I'm not allowing the lambda t's to be correlated, and that could be extended for allowing that. And um, the predictor uh, derived would, would look like this. It would depend on the averages of the, of the uh, residuals. Again, the average over time of the residual, the total average, and these variance components. And actually, if there's a constant in the model, this term drops out. So this looks like our old friend, okay, uh, except it's with a different omega, a fancier two-way omega, all right? There's extensions of this to, the, uh, uh, to uh, uh, models with heteroscedasticity and uh, the extensions of the Bailey and Baltagi work to the two-way model. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about that because I don't have time. But how do you predict, even in a, with a, with a two-way model, even using, uh, uh, well, I showed you how to do that with the random effects model. With a fixed effects model, there's a problem with time. You don't know the coefficient of the, of the, of the future time periods, right? But economists are resilient, so in, in predicting, in predicting uh, carbon monoxide uh, 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 emissions, or dioxide emissions, my chemistry is bad, okay, uh, 98, what they did is they basically put a, 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 a on the lambda t, a, a, a time uh, 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 regression, essentially, okay? You can see it's now a linear trend plus a, a, a structural uh, kind of break at, at, at 1970. That's what they did in their Ari stat, okay? Um, and they actually made it nonlinear in a second uh, version where they put log here, uh, minus 1940, okay? Although these two time eff effect specifications had essentially the same goodness of fit, they resulted in different out of sample projections. The linear spline projected time effects by continuing the estimated trend to 2050, while the nonlinear trend projecting a flattening trend consistent with the trend decelerations from 50 to 90. This was done earlier by Hotz, Eakin, and Selden in 95, same idea, but they didn't do the linear trend. They basically used the, the, for the time effect the value of the last year. Okay, the last year, so they assumed it constant as the last year. So there was an assumption to, to break the fixed effect uh, thing. Now, can we add serial correlation? Because, I mean, if, if we're going to predict in time, there's always uh, strike effects that affect for periods of time, uh, policy interventions that will have lasting effects, uh, uh, oil embargoes or, what, or, or, or wars or whatever. And, and the answer is uh, yes, you can do that. Okay, I had uh, written a nice paper with uh, uh, 
Chi Li extending the estimation of a of a error component model with serial correlation over the simple type where we know the omegas. Of course, you, you, you can do it for, 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 uh, for more general terms, but let's start with the simplest one, the AR1 on the remainder uh, disturbance. So you've got the heterogeneity mu i, and then the no it is an AR1, so you have an extra parameter, and stationarity is assumed here. Okay, uh, and here's the initial value. And so the predictor, so the, the, uh, the, 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 the paper shows how to estimate this model and how to forecast. The forecast turns out, okay, the, uh, the, the Goldberger correction term for the fancier omega with, with AR1 and with heterogeneity of the random type, okay, will, will, will depend on the GLS residuals again, the omega and the covariance. And at the end of the day, this is what it looks like. It looks like a mess, but it isn't really. This is if, 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 if heterogeneity was zero, this term will drop out, and this is Goldberger's term for one period ahead, okay? I'm doing one period ahead, I didn't tell you that, okay? If, 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 uh, uh, if rho was zero, if rho was zero, this will turn out to be the average of the residuals okay, across time. It doesn't look like the average of the residuals across time because in a pre winston transformation, there's a Cochrane orchid from 2 to T and there's a, there's a special, K, uh, special uh, 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 weight for the first observation, right? This anchors the data. This is almost a pseudo difference, okay? And they have the same variance. So this is the pre winston or Cadiala transformation. We're applying it here. That's why this, the first observation get, takes special care, okay? The, the special care turns out to be of this form in the correlation coefficient, the, uh, the uh, uh, of course, if rho is zero, this is one, and this is one plus t minus one, this is t, so this becomes an average, the d squared becomes an average. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into the details, you can read the details. So it's the natural predictors if there was no heterogeneity or no correlation, and, and we can do that for AR2, as long as you know the omega or, or what, what, what cracked that time series model, you can plug it into our paper and get your, your blob your estimation actually and your blot. Uh, it's, it's done in STATA for AR1, I think, but I don't think they do the predictor correctly. Okay, so here's, here's the, uh, the, uh, the AR2. So you correct like a Cochrane orchid for the first two periods, and as usual, there's the, uh, the, the, there's the average of the residuals transformed uh, with rho, of course, or the pre winston where the first two observations get special weights. The rest are equally weighted, okay? It sort of makes sense, or it makes sense to me, okay? Anyway, here's a special quarterly uh, uh, AR4 model of Kenneth Wallace uh, for seasonality. Uh, you can do that. That's a special omega. That's what it looks like. You go, you go uh, UT minus three, and then the, the average would look like that. So all of these are formulas to correct your predictors to get a blot. Of course, they all depend on these estimates. For an MA1, we've also done that. You could do that sequentially. I'm not gonna go through the details. This is an econometric theory piece. And um, you can, you can um, uh, extend it to uh, ARP, MAQ, uh, and uh, actually Zindwalsh, and uh, um, Zindwalsh, and uh, uh, what's the other fellow at uh, uh, McGill? Uh, Galbraith uh, extended the estimation, but the, 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 the forecast hasn't been uh, extended to an ARMA type model. Uh, if you want an, uh, a, uh, the application by Miller, uh, for, uh, by Fries and Miller on uh, sales of lottery tickets in Wisconsin was actually with serial correlation. So they had 50 zip codes in Wisconsin selling lottery for 40 weeks. The first 35 were, take, were used to estimate the model, the remaining five were used to, to uh, validate the model with forecasts. And using mean absolute error criteria, mean absolute percentage error criteria, the best forecasts were given by the error component model with AR1 disturbances, followed by the fixed effects with AR1 disturbances. The fixed effects does well as long as you're not, uh, you know, you're, 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 uh, you're not predicting uh, the time effects, okay? Because that, then you have to make strong assumptions. We can extend this to spatial correlation. And spatial correlation really is, is, uh, was invented for, uh, you know, uh, for, for uh, cross-section dependence, 
right? We, we normally assume we randomly selected the, these, these people, they should be uh, uh, IID independent. But, but once, once, we start, once we start looking at uh, uh, networks, neighbors, okay, then there's correlation, okay? And that's now very popular, uh, whether in economic theory, uh, the networks, or, or whether in, in, in econometrics. I don't have to convince uh, urban economists uh, uh, studying housing that neighbors, neighbors, neighbors are important. You know that the price of your house is all about neighbors and where you are, okay? And if there's a lot of crime in your neighborhood, then your price is low. If, it is, if, it is, if, if all your neighbors are rich and you're the economist, you bought the cheapest house, you're doing well. Okay, all right, so, so, and there's spillovers, okay? If there's crime in, an, in, 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 in a one mile area, it's gonna affect you if there's, if there's uh, so anyway, that's, that's the uh, spatial effect. These geographers draw, uh, or the, uh, uh, draw circles, okay, mile, two mile, three miles, those defines my neighbors, okay? Or make it proportional to distance, or distance squared, weighted all, to equal one, and make the, your price dependent on your neighbor's price, okay? So there's a lot of structure there, okay, this, in the spatial model. It, uh, that's why economists are resistant to that type of model. But it's a simple model, like time series AR1. Come on, we don't believe it's ut rho ut minus one plus epsilon t, but it's a nice way to start, and then you can sophisticatedly uh, study something more. So that's what the spatial guys do. They do yo, uh, u, u is rho w uh, uh, u plus epsilon. So here's, I'm sorting, that, I'm gonna sort the data differently because I need the houses. I need the houses in, in, in each year. So now I'm, uh, the mu is, is not time varying. The phi is the, the idiosyncratic uh, time varying variable for the n houses. Okay, all right. Here's this, the SAR, spatial AR model. They call it AR even though it's not a lag, okay? The, it's your neighbor. Yeah, the disturbance of your neighbor, your neighbor was robbed, you're, you're going to get that shock, okay? All right, there was a fire, it's going to affect uh, your, the price of your house. Is that clear, okay? The parameter is lambda, just to keep it uh, different from the row, okay, of an AR1. And the W is a spatial weight matrix. That's what I said. I don't have problems with geographers doing you know, GPS, mapping your distances, your coordinates, and seeing how, how, different, how far you are from another. Trade economists use it all the time, right? Distance, uh, capital to capital, port to port, to, 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 to see the effect on trade, but they use it as regressors. Once you start putting in a W matrix, they scream bloody murder. Okay, well, that, that's, why, that's the one mile radius, the two mile radius, the three mile radius, okay? Uh, you're either my neighbor one or zero if you lie there or, or not, or by the distance measure, or you know, some get more sophisticated, commuting distances and whatnot. I don't have a clock, so somebody has to tell me how, what? One hour has gone, so. I'm done. Well, well one hour has, has Okay, has and I have only yeah, one hour. You have, you have five, 10 minutes left. Okay. Oh, you should say so. Okay, sorry about that. I, I went through the easy stuff. Uh, I still have a uh, hundred slides. See, this is what I told them. I'll teach you all day if I can still keep uh, standing, but I am not. So I'm going to go a little quickly here, just to give you a, a, a view from the forest. You can read the chapter. Hopefully, uh, 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 it's it's there. You bought the book, uh, the the, the Timmerman. Uh, uh, it's in your library, so you can uh, get the copy of the chapter. It gets fancier, so the, the fancier matrix now looks like the old panel thing here, but here it depends on this uh, spatial weight matrix, okay? The weight matrix, uh, like I said, your error is related to your neighbor's error, okay? The W is well specified. It's distance or ones and zeros, okay? And you only, you, you put zeros on the diagonal because you don't want to relate your own disturbance to your, to your disturbance. You want to relate it to your neighbor's disturbances, okay? And so, in any case, the, the, it's not as pretty as the simple error component model, but the, the, the degree of computation becomes less because uh, it's not NT by NT, it's really N by N. So the problems that the, that the cross-section people have in computation of, of, these, uh, uh, of these MLEs, like uh, Luke Anslin, uh, a very nice place to start, 
uh, old book now 88, uh, it, 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 the same n by n dimension is still the same in panels. So this we, uh, I did with Dong Li, one of my students uh, who is at Kansas State. Uh, and and what, what we did was we, uh, we allowed for uh, uh, the uh, spatial AR model in, uh, in uh, uh, estimating uh, cigarette demand and liquor demand in the United, uh, United States. Comparing uh, 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 doing nothing, OLS doing fixed effects uh, with spatial, doing random effects with spatial, and uh, uh, we also uh, uh, have done this for the spatial moving average model. Notice the spatial moving average model, they're on this side now, okay? Which makes sense to the time series people, right? But there's, there's no lags here, okay? All right. And then, um, um, so, so the, 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 what we derive here is the predictor for a SAR or an SMA with heterogeneity. And obviously it will depend on the uh, heterogeneity components as theta that we saw before and the elements of these W matrices that, are, that define your neighbors and give them weights, okay? So does that help? Yes, it helped in the cigarettes and in the liquor. If you rank, uh, of course this is an application, so you don't know what the true model is, but given that you, you've, uh, you specified the model correctly, you had 46 states here, contiguous uh, states, 63 to 92, we removed Alaska and Hawaii, and uh, we do spatial co uh, correlation by just whether you are a neighbor geographically, okay, so you could do more sophisticated stuff. The predictor comes out, uh, the random effects is the best, fixed effects is second best, and uh, doing nothing is the worst, okay? And not uh, doing uh, spatial uh, uh, is, is less, doing only heterogeneity is less, okay? Of course, uh, we, we've, we've applied the Diebold Mariano uh, test here for its pairwise forecast, uh, but more sophisticated measures should be used. This was also uh, applied by uh, Longi and uh, Nijkamp for uh, uh, some West German regional labor markets. Uh, and uh, uh, ignoring spatial interactions, they found suboptimal forecasts. <coughs> I really have to speed up. Um, I'm gonna skip that one. Skip that one. I'm gonna skip a lot of stuff if it's only five minutes, and I apologize for that. Okay, uh, this was all empirical applications. Does it work in Monte Carlo? It does, but of course it depends on your design. It's limited by that. The same results happen. When we set up a model with heterogeneity and spatial, uh, even misspecifying the spatial or the heterogeneity, uh, taking care of it is, uh, is, is better than not doing anything. All right. Uh, I uh, mm, simulated regressions just extends this to multiple equations. I did that with Alain Pirot, uh, my uh, uh, French uh, uh, co-author. Uh, we use GM methods and MLE methods. Uh, and actually, if you want to see an ap application on hedonics, uh, it's with uh, Bresson in the Journal of Ur Urban Economics on housing in Paris. Okay. We didn't forecast, but we estimated and uh, um, uh, uh, looked at hedonics of housing there, okay? I'm clicking away. Homogeneous versus heterogeneous, I wish I had more time to talk about that because that's really uh, a, a, a big issue, to pool or not to pool, as I told my uh, students. Uh, Shakespeare was an econometrician, yeah, so uh, very important to, uh, to, to, to study whether you want to pull the data or not. And uh, what, what I, what the ultimate, uh, it's never gonna be settled. And, and actually this, this uh, uh, anytime you group observations, what countries you put together is very important, okay? Clive used to say you don't put Cyprus with, with, with India, okay? Uh, uh, but you know, so I'm sure some guy would say no, for this purpose I wanna do it, or some, sometimes. Uh, but in, in any case, you, uh, the, the, the idea that, that you can test whether these countries all have the same delta, you know, they used to do that in the 90s with a Chow test, which was simple, assume sigma squared i, okay, or uh, this was made fun of by Robertson and Simon, first time in 92 General Applied Econometrics, and later by Pesaran and Smith in a dynamic model, and that's why they stick to heterogeneous models. So you can stick to different estimates or the pooled estimates 
Madala is somewhere in the middle. He said, look, you do the, test, you do the different estimates, they're all over the place. We showed that in our gasoline study. You get price elasticities that are positive. Okay, you can try to get better data, better model. You're still gonna get high variance across what you think is even similar countries, OECD countries. They should respond to gasoline in the same way in terms of the prices. Whereas the pooled model always gives you nice estimates, reasonable estimates you can take to policymakers. But when you do the test, even the proper test you reject. So as a statistician, you should not pool, okay? As an economist, you can't give these estimates. And so you actually can combine them, some Bayesian way, right? Madala said, shrink, shrink the, the, the good estimates. If you want to make an estimate for California, okay, take the national estimate and, 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 and shrink it. And the shrinkage factors uh, could, be, could, be, uh, could come from, uh, from uh, Bayesian ideas or from the F statistic for testing the, the regression. I promise to go faster, okay? So, uh, I know you're looking at the clock here. Um, so we did that. We did that in a lot of racehorses. So I, I took our gasoline data and I did a racehorse. I, I said, I don't know what the true model is. This is a, a, a model for gasoline. Of course, you can criticize the model. Let's look at the, the heterogeneous models. Let's look at the homogeneous models. Let's look at Bayesian models and let's forecast. Let's take away some, some years and see how it does one year ahead, five years ahead, 10 years ahead. And by, by uh, if you look at that RE stat uh, piece in the Journal of Econometrics piece, one on gasoline and one on cigarettes, you'll see that the simple estimators always were among the top estimators in, in forecasting. So in a, in a, in a uh, 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 horse race like that, this, this happened. This happened in other applications. Uh, I don't have time to go through them. Driver uh, and, uh, in my, uh, an orga, uh, orga. And it happened in, uh, in uh, macro applications. Uh, uh, the, the article that uh, I wanted to talk about was uh, Rapak and Wohar. But um, uh, to, to look forward, okay, and, and, and maybe I, I, I can finish with that. To look forward, um, we really look, should look at the, uh, the pooling of forecasts uh, uh, versus panel data forecasting uh, 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 literature and uh, really try to, uh, to uh, uh, um, do better things in panels, okay? Uh, uh, why do you uh, uh, combine forecasts? Well, uh, I'm not gonna go through what Timmerman has already written, but, but it's uh, 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 important uh, to do that, and uh, uh, maybe there's something that we can do with uh, with the heterogeneous forecasts uh, much better. Uh, uh, it's it's not been done, okay, especially with structural breaks and uh, uh, other other stuff. Uh, <clears throat> uh, read the Rapak and Wohar article. It it has some of the stuff for a monetary model of exchange rates. And uh, it, it talks about how some of the uh, estimates were not plausible uh, so, uh, uh, in, in, in when they were heterogeneous and how they're plausible when they're homogeneous and uh, how they performed an out-of-sample forecasting uh, for a panel versus country by country root mean squared error for a 1, 4, 8, 12, and 16 step ahead. And uh, uh, they basically f uh, follow our lead and uh, discuss this uh, in a similar way, okay? Uh, Okay, um, there's v v more recent literature on, on uh, uh, diagnostics uh, for these, uh, 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 the SILES U, the Diebold Mariano, the S by Westerlund and uh, Bascher. Uh, and um, there's, um, um, okay, I should have better timed myself here. Okay, there's, there's also a uh, uh, more sophisticated model, one in the, in the, in the JBS by Pesseran, uh, Schurman, and Smith, uh, forecasting 134 economic and financial variables for 26 regions made up of 33 countries, cover about 90% uh, of the world output. And what they use is a global VAR model over the quarterly period 
uh, building on the forecast combination literature, the effects of model and estimation uncertainty on forecast outcomes are examined by pooling forecasts obtained from different GVAR models estimated over alternative sample periods. Given the heterogeneity of economies uh, considered, as well as likely the multiple structural breaks averaging across both models and, and windows make a significant difference, that's his idea. If you want, you know, he averages his estimators pool being grouped and averaging forecasts here. Using panel version of Diewald Mariano, they conclude that double average GVAR forecasts uh, perform better than the benchmark competitors, especially for output inflation and real equality prices. Skip that. Forecasting versus aggregate forecasting, I'm not going to go through that. I'll let you read that. And I think I should stop here because I don't want to make my host unhappy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.